Hey everyone, and welcome to Korg's second live streamed Facebook clinic. Uh, we did one last week on the Minilog XD, and we're back this week with the Wave State Wave Sequencing Synthesizer. And we're going to take some questions. We're going to go through some of the sounds on this amazing synth. Um, that sound that I was just on is called 10 pads on the sample knob. Give you a close up here. If I play a chord and I move the sample knob right here, you can see, since I have the sample lane selected, I have a bunch of great sounding pads right at my fingertips. The great thing about this sound is that it's only using one of the four layers, which is pretty wild. Uh, one of the huge things about WaveState is it has, uh, in addition to wave sequencing, vector synthesis. So if I pull up a sound that has more than one layer enabled, you can see that it gets really, really deep and really nicely layered. It, it, you can get some really thick textural sounds. So this sound, for example, Planetarium Brass, has all four layers enabled and one thing that you can do to hear what's on each layer is use the vector joystick with vector volume enabled so if i'm in the middle right so that's kind of a blend of brass and strings and uh kind of an airy pad underneath it which is awesome. I mean, it's just a, a huge, thick, layered sound that has a lot going on. But to hear kind of the individual layers that make that up, let's move first to the left with the vector joystick. It's kind of a standard brass. Let's go to the top. That's B. That's layer B. That's more your, your trombones. This is like your higher brass your trombones. Let's see what's on, on C. That's a nice orchestra, some nice strings. And this is kind of a breathy pad right here on layer D. Another way that you could do that is from the middle and you can hold enter and press a layer to solo that layer without moving the vector joystick. And then you can unmute the other layers like that. And this sound is really versatile. This is one that I start with a lot. It's really great for maybe scoring kind of a, a heavy scene. Uh, and I, what I usually do kind of first to start out is bring down the amp envelope on layer A. So I get that, that sharp attack on the brass. Maybe bring it down all the way. go back to the strings So I love this. Uh, I love this sound. It's just one of a bunch of really great voicings that are on the wave state. Uh, but what makes it really special is it has that vector uh, synthesis layer, uh, just layering to get a bunch of different sounds in there. And you can go in and see that I'm not really using a lot of wave sequencing on that layer. This layer has kind of minimal wave sequencing and that layer has a little bit there. But if I go to a sound that has a lot of really nice wave sequencing, like, let's see.
So that has a lot of really cool randomness going on. And that's one of the things that the wave state does that it brings new to um, uh, wave sequencing. So on the original wave state, and we talk about this a little bit on our YouTube channel, we just released a series of videos and those are intended for all of you new wave state owners. I know some of you have just gotten your wave states. Those videos are intended for uh, you know you to learn all the tips and tricks to get the most out of your wave state right out of the box. So head on over to the Korg YouTube and check those out. Um, but one of the things that we talk about is on the original wave state uh, station in the 90s, there you only really had uh, kind of a linear way of wave sequencing where you'd have pitch and uh, timing and your sample, um, and and it, it would only be a set number of steps for each of those uh, lanes of wave sequencing. But if I go and I look here, I have kind of uh, different polyrhythmic wave sequences. So if I blurry here there we go so let me give you a close-up of the screen and you can see that these wave sequencing lanes are different lengths so that way you're not getting the same loop every time you go through the wave sequence and that way some wave sequences are longer some are shorter and they all kind of loop back around and there's kind of a polyrhythmic thing going on where you get some really unpredictable sounds. Check the other layer. This layer has some really long wave sequences. And you can see that they're stepping through very slowly. So that's an example of wave sequencing on here. And then there's kind of a third thing that I want to show which is that if you just have a single multi-sample, you don't necessarily have to have a wave sequence going. So this is an initialized performance, blank performance. It comes up as, let's go into perform, and then we can select our sound, initialized wave sequence right here. Right, so what I did just now is I went to perform, scrolled all the way back down to init performance, because no matter where we are, we can just hit perform and get back to our kind of home base, right? So it's uh, it's very handy. And then I go to scroll to init performance and I press the wave sequence button. And then I am in uh, my wave sequence select, but I can move back to mode, right? You guys can kind of see, yeah. Mode and change that to just a single multi-sample. So multi-samples are Korg's way of storing sound data. And right now, just by default, I have a piano pulled up. And this is uh, just one of the gigabytes of multi-samples that Korg WaveState has on board. So to create these awesome preset voicings that are on here, and there's tons of great voicings made by some really talented voicing artists in the development of WaveState, to create them, you need really high-quality multi-samples. And the multi-samples on here come from sources like the Korg Kronos and uh, other Korg workstations over the years, and also from the original wave state. All of the original wave sequences and multi-samples and expansions are actually in the wave state uh, from the original wave station. So if you want those old classic sounds, there's even some presets that are just like the original. So uh, if I go to this one right here, Ski Jam, that one was on the original wave station. <laughs> Did anybody notice that this wave sequence is the same each time that it repeats? This is because, since this is modeled after one of the wave sequences on the original wave station, each lane in the wave sequence, all of these wave sequence lanes over here, have the same number of steps. So... I just hold that key. Just holding the low C right now. 
this covered up by my camera here. You can hear that it repeats the same every time. So that's a way that you can imitate that old style of wave sequencing on the wave state. But there's a way to, there, I mean, there's many ways to use wave sequencing now because we've broken out of that kind of linear style of wave sequencing. This, I think, was the 10 pads on the sample knob was the sound that came up when I started the stream. And I can just, you can watch as I move the sample knob. There we go. You can hear all the different pads. Ooh, that one's beautiful. So yeah, so you can use the sample knob as kind of a real-time control to change what sample that you're starting on. Some other ways that you, so, so anyway, back to that initialized performance, let's go to our wave sequence select and go back and select a single multi-sample, right? And now we have just a ton of multi-samples -sample, too to start with. So let's kind of do a basic subtractive analog sound. This could be cool. Um, so let's see. Here we go. Let's see. Wave. And so you have everything from those multi-samples, this high quality real instrument multi-samples to analog modeled waves, but not just, you know, one saw, one sign, one square, one triangle. You have a ton. And then in the filter section over here, you have modeled filters, which is really cool. So that's a Poly6 modeled filter. It comes from the Cork Kronos. This is an MS20 modeled filter, and you can really hear it if I bring up the resonance. You can hear that rip. Nice. Now, if I bring in some effects, let's throw some some effects on there. Hold shift. And then get the filter envelope involved. So let's hit the filter envelope. One of the things to note here is that you notice that I'm moving around really quickly and easily on wave state. When you first get in front of it, it can kind of be uh, almost intimidating. But once you spend some time with it, you realize you can just press a button and I'm in that section. The hardware on wave state is very closely integrated with its UI. So if I press the button for any section, go to the LFO for the filter, amp, the actual filter, envelope. Let's go to one of the lanes. And since I'm in a single multi-sample, I won't have any lanes. Um, but let's go back to the filter envelope here. And I actually have multiple pages. So if I page through by holding shift and pressing page, I can control that there. I have the amp envelope intensity. <laughs> So now I have a saw wave that uh, in my uh, wave sequence select here, I have a single multi-sample and it's an ARP 2600 style saw wave. And that's running through an MS-20 filter. So there is a lot you can do with this even beyond wave sequencing, which just makes it an incredibly powerful and versatile uh, digital synth. I mean, like we're at this point 
in digital synthesis where it's beyond just analog modeling. We're to the point where we're going visiting, revisiting this classic style of synthesis, wave sequencing, and doing it in a way that brings it into, into the year 2020, which is just so awesome. So uh, let's just play some more of the cool sounds on here. I'm going to check out the, the chat. If you have questions, you want to hear anything in particular, you're curious how to do something, let us know in the comments of the Facebook live feed. Uh, I want to give a shout out to everybody in the chat. Welcome to the live stream. If you're just tuning in, we're here with the Korg Wave State, uh, developed uh, in conjunction with Korg R&D in California. This was one of the first synths that Korg R&D out in Korg California really led the charge on, and they did a wonderful job with both the hardware, the software. They got some really talented voicing uh, artists in here, and it's just a wonderful synth. <clears throat> Excuse me, a wonderful synth. Um, so let's check out the comments. Let's see if we have any questions um are they multi-layered for velocity or one sample per note so a multi-sample it kind of depends so um it, it kind of each multi-sample can have uh you know a lot of different samples for every key if it's like a piano or it can be you know a single cycle of a waveform uh so it really depends on each sound um let's see some more we've got uh, Cameron says the, that piano that I was playing a little while ago, and it was a single sample of a piano sounds like the M1, which that's a interesting observation because if I do that, if I go to wave sequence and select instead of wave sequence, single multi-sample, I have an acoustic piano on here, but I can actually get my classic M1 piano. So that sounds a lot like the M1 because it's the same uh it's the same pcm from the original m1 that's actually in here which is just so cool i have a question from patrick that is asking how to save programs all right so this is this is very easy let's go to perform and let's let's go let's go to that brass sound that i had pulled up before remember when we okay all right so what we want to do here is uh save the sound but let's change it first right we have the presets but i didn't like the envelope setting on that it's too slow uh for what i want to do which is play you know a really huge brass and just have it like right in your face immediately so right we've got some attack on there so let's go to the amp and i can press a button for any section the screen immediately jumps there right so that's an example of the ui integrating directly with the hardware very useful so let's we can page through our layers and it stays on the same section, right? So we're in the amp envelope screen for layer A, B, C, and D. You can see we have all four of our layer envelopes for the amp. Let's turn down attack for A and turn down attack for C and D. So now if I play a note, there's very little attack on there so it immediately starts up um there we go i think we're focused in a little bit better now um so the question was how do we save a sound well that's actually very easy we press right and this will come up protected cannot overwrite shift right to save new this is because all of the factory sounds the presets on wave state are right protected you can't overwrite them you'll always have the factory presets. And one of the great things about WaveState is it's got gigabytes of storage. So you'll never run out of space for writing your new sounds like you would on uh, maybe older digital synths that only had a certain number of preset slots and you had to start deleting the factory presets to make room for your own sounds. So let's go in and it says shift right to save new. So shift right and now save as new performance, press enter to confirm and we've saved that as a new performance. While we're in this screen, we can page through all of the aspects of our sound, right? This is the perform screen. That I have all my uh, wave sequencing lanes. Close up here and I can page through. These are my layer volumes, right? I could even go in and change 
change this program, right? Right? So what I'm doing there is press enter. Now I've selected that. I've changed one of the programs on layer A. Sorry, one, yeah, one of the programs on layer A that makes up this performance, right? Because each layer is a separate program. So there's four different programs layered, right? And then I have individual volume controls. But the other three programs, C, D, uh, B, C, and D, stay the same. So I can go in, I can uh, just kind of like surgically change one of my sounds that's making up the sound, but have the whole rest of it uh, stay the same, which is great. So then if I keep paging, I have velocity zones. This is a way that you can do splits and have maybe like a bass down here and, you know, a, a melody up here or, and, and while I'm in this section, velocity zones and keyboard zones. So that's how you do the, the split. You'd make a split point here and say you only want these keys to play your basses. You're only uh, going to play your leads on th these keys. Uh, you could actually also change that to be a MIDI module to select multiple channels of MIDI. So because we have four layers, because we're four layer multi-timbral, right? We can set each of those layers to a different MIDI channel, right? So if I, if I want to do that, this is, this is a really cool tip. So let's turn off the global MIDI channel, right? Now... We can change the MIDI channel for a layer, right? Let's see. And now change the MIDI channel for another layer. And this is a way that you could straight up use your wave state as a sound module and have four different channels of MIDI coming in. And, you know, maybe you have another keyboard over here that's doing one of the layers on here. You have two layers that are on the built-in keyboard. And then you have a sequencer over there that's sequencing another one of the layers. It's super awesome. So let's check out the chat and let's see if we have some more questions coming in. How does it sound when you change patches? I'm really interested in playing live and to be able to switch on the fly. On some Korg synths, you can hold a Korg, have it sounding, switch preset, and the new preset will be the next sound you play after you release the chord. From Demuse Mark. Uh, that's actually on here. So that's called Smooth Sound Transitions, and I can demonstrate that. So let's find a, a little louder sound. So I have this beat going, right? Uh, let's see. Right, so I had, and then I switched sounds. So that's the smooth sound transitions that are also on Cork workstations like Kronos. So if I am holding a note and it's not something rhythmic and I switch sounds, that's going to sustain, right? I'm still playing that other sound and I switch sounds. And now if I release these, I'm on the new sound. So that's how you don't get dropouts if you're switching from one sound to the next. And now you have the ability to kind of... Um, Sorry, I'm just switching back to the chat here. You have the ability to not have any dropouts if you switch to a new sound through the smooth sound transitions. So if you're just joining us, we're doing a live stream here with the Korg Wave State. If you have any questions about this awesome synth, let us know in the chat. And we're also going to demonstrate the awesome sounds of this digital synth. Um, if I set each layer from Hubert, if I set each layer on specific MIDI channel, is there a way to not direct some layer through the reverb. So this is really interesting. On the wave state, each effect or the kind of effects chain is uh, based on the program. So if I go and page through the, th the four layers that make up this performance, right? I have different effect settings, different effects chains for each of the layers on here. So to answer your question, if I only want reverb, for example, on layer A, I select layer A and then I edit the effects for layer A. But if I don't want reverb on layer B, I can simply turn it off. 
and do that by holding shift, pressing the reverb button. So now if I go back to layer A and press shift, the reverb is on. So let's check out some more of the questions from the chat. Um, what's the most interesting or original sound you've heard or made on the wave state? That's from Nick. Um, let's see. I mean, I have a bunch of favorites. So one of my personal favorites is that brass that I had going earlier. And uh, this one's cool. It's a stochastic orchestra. So the sequencing can give you some kind of random unexpected attributes. <laughs> a lot of fun uh there's also some sounds on here that are just really useful for scoring for doing just very specific types of scenes this one's actually just a bass right but you have different bases on the sample knob and if i go to perform So this is a way that I'm only using one layer right now and giving you access to a whole bunch of different bases. On one sound and just using the sample knob to modulate between all of those. And uh, you can do that live. I don't have a uh, node advance turned on, so I'm just gonna be on whatever step that I select. Um, let's see some more of the questions from the chat. Um, so another question is, can you latch keys? So the arpeggiator over here, if I just hold shift and press latch, I have it blinking now. So now I've latched the arpeggiator. So let's go find a really nice arpeggiated sound. And... And just kind of latch some chords and just just go. Let's see, hustle and bustle arp. This is a great example of kind of. This is a great example. This sound for wave sequencing. If I. Go to perform, and. change the loop start and end points, right? So what's happening here is I have a wave sequence that's choosing from a pool of steps, right? And I'm changing the pool of steps that's available for this wave sequence to draw from by changing the loop start and end points. And I'm in the sample lane, so that's what I'm changing. If I change it to just one step available, I'm just gonna get one step. So let's latch that arpeggiator and mess around with our arpeggiator without turning it on or off. This is an important tip for navigating by holding enter and then pressing that section. So now I'm in the arpe arpeggiator and I'll go to change the number of octaves. And let's change the pattern to random. That just sounds awesome. Let's throw on some delay.
of great reverbs in here. Non-linear reverbs. So, while I'm in here, I had a question about some of the white knobs. So the mod knobs are essentially controlling each of the different wave sequencing lanes, but they're very open. So if I just want to create a modulation path, which is what I'll show you guys how to do in a moment, you can do that too. But on here, if I change, for example, the shape, you can see I have different shapes for each step. And the sample knob, which is controlling the wave sequence for the sample lane. And then I have the pitch knob. And this is a way to just kind of see what's going on in your wave sequence. Speed is fun. You can just grab a sound and mess around with your wave sequence. To immediately affect change onto your sound. But your mod knobs, the white knobs that we're talking about, can also just be modulators. So let's say. Let's find a sound that has all four layers. Let's find that sound that I saved before that was a modified grass. All right. All right, so here's an example. If I just want to create a mod assignment, I can hold the mod button and press the right arrow key, right? These arrow keys up top. And now I'm in the add new modulation screen. So you can see, add new modulation and it's just like a lot of the rest of the wave state where the UI is really integrated with the hardware. So if I pick a, a destination, so the cutoff, right? And now I want to pick a, uh, a source, right? So let's see, let's use the master knob, right? And now we press enter to continue, right? We're on layer D just for reference. And let's turn the, intensity all the way up, right? Now let's solo layer D. And now we have control of the cutoff with the master knob. We can kind of dial in, dial in that, but let's go to the rest of the layers and make the same mod assignment. So let's go to C and let's go mod, right arrow, and pick a destination, pick the master knob as the source, enter, turn the intensity all the way up. And while I'm in here, it's useful to note that you can do accelerated editing. So if I don't have the enter button held and I'm moving this knob to input a value, I can hold enter to input it can move much faster through the available values. So let's continue on through here and let's create the same mod assignment for each, right? Enter, turn up the intensity, same thing, mod assignment, cut off, master, enter, accelerated editing, turn that all the way up. Now,
Focus that. I have all four layers, and this is just a really quick, easy example. I have all four layers on the master knob modulating the filter cutoff, right? So all four layers, regardless of what layer you're in, are now having their cutoff modulated by this master knob. That's just one example. Like you can do macros where you're controlling like a bunch of different parameters with just one of the mod knobs, right? So the the way to kind of uh, use these to great effect when you're playing live is set up all of your macros beforehand, or if you want to add in a new macro control, uh, you can just very easily go mod and press the right arrow. So, and let's see, let's go back to the perform screen. You press mod and the left arrow, you can see these modulation destinations and targets and sort all of your modulation assignments by what's being modulated or just what's involved, right? So if we go back and let's see, synth and effects, let's scroll down. Let's see all of our mod assignments that have to do with the filter in this particular sound. Let's select filter and go enter, right? So now we see if we page through shift and right arrow, we can see what's going on, right? I have three of these assignments. Now if I go show in mod list again, scroll back to all, now I see all of my uh, mod assignments. So let's see. I can see all of my mod assignments. And that's a way that you can, if you really just want to see only mod assignments that are affecting one specific uh, area of the synth, you can select that and then it'll sort those together. So let's see, let's pick out another cool sound. see what the pre-effects on here is oh of course guitar amp and you have a couple different feed uh feedback lead is this preset we have a couple different fe uh presets oh that's fun okay so let's see i'm looking at the comments by the way if you're just joining us we're live with the korg wave state uh so ask your questions in the chat we won't be able to necessarily get to all of them, but we will try to get to as many as possible. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday afternoon, everybody. Hello to all of our viewers. Thank you for attending this Korg uh, Facebook Live Synth Clinic. Uh, all of you new Wave State owners, people are thinking about getting a Wave State, welcome. Um, and if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. And we did just put out a YouTube series. So a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about is also on the Korg YouTube. If you go to uh, Korg, uh, sorry, youtube.com slash Korg USA videos, you can find our YouTube uh, channel and you can look up all of the new tutorials that we put up here on uh, on the YouTube. Um, so let's see. Let's check the comments for some of the, the questions here. Um, Uh, can WaveState import our own or new samples? So uh, not as of yet. We certainly can't rule it out in a future firmware update. Uh, so we are always updating our synths. Like this, this, this synth is, I mean, it hasn't even reached its capacity for sample memory. So uh, that, that should tell you something about at least the possibilities uh, that may come up in the future. Um, but as of yet, yeah, you can't load your own samples onto it, uh, but it's certainly not impossible um, that that might happen in the future. Um, so definitely stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, let's check out some of the other wave sequences, wave sequence sounds on here. Let's go in and look at what's going on. Let's 
Soul some layers. Let's just see. Right, so we've got the drums on layer A. We've got guitar chunks on layer two, layer B. Just our snare. And some other percussion on layer C. And we've got our our pad on layer D. Alright, let's go through some more of these cool sounds. This one's fun. Let's see what's going on with the wave sequence on here. Oh, this is cool. If I change the gate setting, so let me play that again. Just solo one of these layers. And let's go back to change our loop points. And go into our arpeggiator. And let's change the amount of octaves. Change the pattern to random. And So a lot of these presets are built to, you're able to kind of get a huge soundscape just by playing one key. Um, if you're not into that, you can always disable layers. So if we go, let's see, let's find. the sound i'm curious let's go enter soul this one. Ooh, yeah that's like okay so the protagonist in the horror movie is reaching for the doorknob all right next sound that makes up this these are the four layers all right oh this is just a really low frequency rumble oh nice sounds like the upside down from stranger things and then let's see let's go oh this is kind of your standard string sound a little sounds like some analog analog mod uh uh analog emulation there and then Oh, that sounds really creepy, especially in the lower octaves. So, let's play that again. Oh, nice. I love this. This is just a great scoring uh, keyboard. You can also play a lot of the awesome multi-samples from core workstations and stuff on here and then you can just play something like this just kind of goofy stuff but that would be a perfect music cue if you had 
I don't know, Scooby Doo walking into a haunted house. <laughs> All right. This is just a beautiful uh, piano and pad that's layered. Let's go into the lanes here. This I think everybody will recognize. This is a fun exploration of the filter. Nice. So I, I noticed a question in the chat uh, from Stuart asking uh, how many different filter types. So let's go into perform and let's go to the filter on here. Let's just choose type. Let's hit the type button. And now we can switch types by hitting the type button. We can also go just to the type section. So say we're in perform, we hit enter, hold enter, and now we're in the filter section, but hitting type has not changed the filter type. So now we can go into the list here. And so for each of these different filter emulations, right, the MS-20 is a low pass and a high pass, right? The two pole, this is kind of just a native filter for wave state. Um, you have kind of a bunch of different pretty versatile filters, a band reject and a multi-filter. So you kind of basically whatever filter that you need on here, you have it. Um, and of course, these can all be different for your four layers. It's multi Um And while we're on the topic of layers and multi timbrality, uh, Wave State it's got sixty four voices, so you can play, you know, up to sixteen notes with each layer before you run out of voices, which just makes it uh, that much more powerful. Um, so yeah, that's, those are some of the filter types that are available on here. Um, is it possible to modulate effects per step or in time? Um, says David Prolog. All right. So this is interesting. This is a great question. Um, I showed you guys how to create a modulation path, right? Uh, by holding mod and pressing the right arrow, right? So let's go back to perform. Let's just choose a random sound. And let's create, actually, let's go to an initialized performance, right? So we have a blank, completely blank sound, right? So now we have um, old mod, press the right arrow and select any of the aspects of our effects, right? So let's go to delay and let's hit, okay, so we've changed the delay wet or dry. And now we can... Um, choose any of our knobs over here, right? Um, and then after, if we want to change what we're modulating, right? We can, let's see, or, or change the source, right? Let's go back to, let's see. see what we have here these are all of our controllers here so everything from vector joystick mod wheel um, velocity we have our 
mod knobs here. And then we have different generators, so your vector envelope. So those are some of the modulation sources you have to choose from. So let's go back in here and let's keep going through some of the sounds on here. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Uh, this is Korg uh, Facebook Live Clinic on WaveState. Thank you all for joining us. Um, play some more of the... Oh, this is great. So one of the cool things about the uh, WaveState is that your wave sequences don't necessarily just need to advance when you play a note, right? See, I have... What's, what's going on here is I'm just using one layer, right? And uh, with the, the sample here, I have different velocities uh, giving me... different samples in the sample lane, right? So I'm in the sample lane over here. You can hear the velocity. Right, so the harder I play, the velocity is going to uh, change the sample that's being played right so you can use only just one layer and get a lot of like uh nuance out of the the velocity with which you're playing notes so that's a really useful way of using velocity if i actually go in here and shift page to velocity zones i could even go further and add in another layer and use my velocity to determine which layers come in right so I have a lower bound, I have a higher bound, and that determines when each layer is being played. Of course, my keyboard zones, the program setup, there you go. So let's go into some of the other sounds on here. Let's see. That's fun. So a lot of these sounds are really useful for scoring. They're also Shouts out to the chat again. What's up, everybody? Let's see. there all right so in the chat i heard somebody request some trance let's see i'm just going through the presets here kind of picking out some that are fun Thank you. 
here's a useful tool when you're in any sort of uh, list on wave state is filters and sort order. So I've pressed the shift and the right key and I can go in and select, let's see, my categories, right? And my collection, right? So let's go in and yeah, fast synth. All right, so so those are all of the sounds that are labeled fast synth on here. Let's go back in here, change the rhythm. All right, let's see. sound to play with the filter on. And if you want to get out of that sort setting, you can go to category all and then you go back and now you can scroll through all the sounds again. If you're just joining us, uh, we're doing the Korg Wave State. This is Korg's live clinic series on Facebook. Thank you all so much for joining us. This is our second week. Last week we did Mini Log XD. You can go back and check that one out. Uh, that's on the Korg Facebook. And if you want to find out more about the Wave State, just visit our YouTube channel, Korg USA Videos. Uh, check us out on Instagram. And I think at this point, I think it's about four o'clock. So let's uh, let's go ahead and play play this out. Mm -hmm. 